Hey man, I'm Chris with Phone Cats, and here is the craziest deck in Magic 2014. It's Mind Maze. There are so many ways that this deck can have an opening hand that seems so hard to come back to. If you've played against the zombie deck and love some of those perfect first three turn plays, <clears throat> those perfect first three turn plays, then you're gonna, I don't know, you'll already kind of know how to play this. A lot of the deck theme is based on being an illusion, and if you touch it, it dies. So it's like a, like kind of like a don't touch it, don't touch it kind of deck. That's what I'm gonna end up calling it. All right, let's go through the cards in order of casting cost. Um, I'll start off with what I'm playing with. Sometimes I like to do the cards that I've excluded, but whatever, we'll do it this way. We got your Jace's Phantasm. Uh, you're rarely going to see it get that plus four, plus four pump. It's more of just one mana for a one, one flyer. If it gets the four, four pump late game, I mean, that's fine and dandy, but it's probably not going to happen very much. Turn one bear is like your ideal play. One mana for a two, two and it has the uh, illusion thing to where if it gets touched it dies. First turn, 2-2. Two, two. They don't want to even use removal on it. They don't even want to like use a, a pump up on it to kill it. It's, it's just a strong opening and it's kind of like the motto for the whole deck. Veiled Sentry is something you probably don't want to play on turn one. Um, it's one mana for an enchantment, and then it plays mind games with your opponent. The next spell that they cast activates this sentry, and it turns into an illusion that's, uh, it doesn't have the glass poke thing, and it's an illusion with power and toughness equal to the card's ability that was cast. So let's say you cast this on turn four, and then they go and it's their turn five. If they cast a five mana spell, this guy pops up as a five five. When it's your turn, he already lost summoning sickness now, so you can attack. It's mind games. You can hold on to it till late game, and if you think they're like biting their nails for like an eight mana spell or a seven mana spell, you play a Veiled Sentry and they're gonna rethink it. Um, on summon, if you uh, if they play like a one mana spell and try to like bait your Sentry or distract your Sentry out of the way, you can unsummon it. You can unsummon their stuff. You can unsummon everything. Right now, I'm playing with all four on summons. You can use Unsummon to keep your creatures alive, and the main creature that you want to keep alive is this Lord of the Unreal. Dude, two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. He's a human wizard. He's not an illusion. But illusion creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and hexproof. A buff, and they can't be targeted. So your creatures that die if they're targeted can't be targeted. That's the whole deal. That's the whole enchilada. Right now, look at my mana breakdown. I, my highest casting cost spell is four mana, and I'm just playing this build where you just dump a whole bunch of illusions and then pray to God that they get hexproof, and then your opponent has to deal with these like overly sized creatures in large quantities. Um, okay, so now from now on you have to take into consideration that every illusion has the chance to get hexproof and plus one plus one. Let's move to this next illusion. Two mana, phantasmal illusion. It basically clones any creature in play, and it gets the glass ability too. If you use this on this, you're gonna have a good time. It turns this into a 2-2 with plus one, plus one, and hexproof. And all your creatures now are getting plus two, plus two that are illusions. It happens a lot. Um, doing a turn one uh, bear little illusion thing, I wanna call him a phantom bear. We're not calling him P-Bear. Uh, a turn one bear, and then a turn two lord, and then a turn three image is not out of the question. I mean, that's about as rare as like a first turn dark ritual hypnotic specter, and then next turn doing a hymn to Torok, which happened a lot. So doing a turn one bear, or any illusion, turn two lord, and then turn three this. You're attacking with your bear that's a 4-4 four four that has hexproof. This guy's a 3-3, three three, and your other lord's a 2-2. Two two. This guy has hexproof. It happens. Um, those are the god draws. And then the rest of this deck is just like more illusions and a lot of them have flying or unblockable. Here's Aether Figment, two mana for a 1-1. One, one. It can't be blocked. It's an illusion. So turn two Lord. Now let's say turn two Figment. This die, this thing. Turn three Lord. Then you're attacking with a 2-2 two, two unblockable hexproof. Um, I mean, that's strong. It also has a kicker ability, so you can cast it on turn 5 if you're a little bit later in the game, and then it's a 3-3. Three, three. 
So with the Lord out, this thing is a five mana for a four four hex proof. It's a little diverse. I mean, in the even if it's just a normal cap, normal, normal way, two mana for a one one, and then if you got a Lord a two two with hex proof attacking that can't be blocked is dope. Okay. Incursion Specialist is one that's on the unblockable side of the fence. It's two mana for a 1-3 wizard, so he's already like a little bit of a good blocker. And then every time that you cast your second spell a turn, this guy gets plus two plus O and can't be blocked. And if you look at the mana breakdown, there's 10 spells that cost one and 17 spells that cost two. So it's kind of easy to get into that momentum to where, um, this guy is attacking for three unblockable each turn. He's not an illusion. I think that would be pushing it, or that would be overpowered. Crovian Mists, we got an illusion here. Two mana, star star. Power and toughness equal to the number of illusions on the battlefield. You only get a chance to play with one of these, but you can make an illusion of it. And I've done it. Um, if you get, uh, I mean, if you just have that with an illusion, the mist with one illusion out, they're both two twos. And now every time that you cast an illusion spell, um, they get pumped up. Like if you cast one illusion, they turn into three threes. It just amps up pretty quick. Yeah, they combo with the Lord. So uh, then another plus one, plus one, and hex proof. That's scary, because people will target that thing pretty quick. You can play with up to four of these Gossamer Phantoms, Phantasms. I'm playing with three right now. It's two mana for a 2-1 flying, and then it has the glass poke thing. I don't know. Um, it just seems mediocre to me. But a lot of games, I've lost to it, and I've won a lot of games with it. It just seems kind of hokey and light. But I mean, playing that on turn two, and then a turn three lord, you're attacking with a 3-2 hexproof flyer that costs two mana. It's all about the lords. You got a twin cast, so you can do some cool, uh, like, in response to your opponent's stuff and just clone their spells. I did a Cultivate once, and that felt smart. It's fun. It's just a nice variable and, like, a wild card to always have. You got one counter spell. Use it wisely. You can't even uh, feign too much because you got to have three mana for that other one. Cancel. Three mana will also get you a Phantom Warrior. You remember this from the old deck. Three mana for a 2-2 two -two can't be blocked. Turn two, and eh, turn one bear, turn two lord, turn three phantom warrior, and your phantom warrior is a three three unblockable hex proof. And then they go, and then they play their first spell, a cultivate, and you're just like, <laughs> there's like different speeds of decks, and if you're not playing one of the right ones, you're just gonna run up against mind maze and dead walkers, and the white weenie deck will walk on you. Okay, let's see. Here's another spell that can that benefits from uh, being like cat two multiple spells being cast on the same turn. That's a weird theme for this one. Three mana for a four four angel. It isn't poke uh, and disappear kind, but it can only be cast if you have played another spell this turn. So your ideal play would be turn four, cast something for one, and then play this angel. It's an illusion, so. I don't know, turn one bear, turn two lord, turn three phantom warrior, turn four, anything for one is good in this deck. And then illusory angel. So she would be three mana for a five five hexproof flyer. Mm -mm. Illusory servant is another turn three play. You've got a lot of good turn three plays. Phantom warrior, that angel, you can't play that on turn three really, but you know what I mean. And now we got this Servant. Three mana for a 3-4 flyer that has the glass poke thing. Um, it's solid. Turn two Lord, turn three this. You just paid three mana for a 4-5 flyer with Hexproof. It happens. It's so hard to deal with. I don't know. Lord than that, if you just have enough islands in your deck and you draw a Lord with any number of cards, it's, it's a situation. Halicon Glaze, this one's funky, dude. Three mana for an enchantment. And then every turn, you wanna play this on turn three, and then next turn, play a creature spell. And then this turns into a 4-4 four, four illusion. With a Lord out, it's a 5-5 five, five flying hex proof. It happens. It does, it's, I know it sounds like, oh, this pipe dream, but man, it happens. The cool thing about this is your opponent can't even mess with it, because at the end of the turn, it turns back into an enchantment. 
The bad news is you got to bank on drawing a creature or playing a creature every turn. So kind of like a uh, plan accordingly. We're getting to some control business. You got to cancel so you can counter spells. You got Frost Breath. I love this one. That art is pretty dope too. That giant just blew on Frost Breath, I guess. Is that what it is? Three mana, tap up to two creatures, and they don't untap during their untap phase. Be pro with this card, man. Don't cast it on your turn, unless you're using getting blockers out of the way for some critty kill shot. But um, I'm normally using this defensively and backpedaling. Like against a zombie deck, you tap their two, you wait till they're gonna declare their attack phase, and then you play this and target their two best creatures, or whatever's most appropriate. So those creatures don't attack this turn, and then next turn, they don't even untap. It's strong, there's only two of them. We're down to the last two cards I'm playing in this deck, and we're still in the three mana slot. Wistful Thinking is crazy. This is one of the few cards that has some like uh, synergy with uh, the Phantasm thing. The one that flies and plays off your opponent's 10 cards in Graveyard. The only time I want to cast this is when my opponent has two cards in their hand. So they got two cards. You cast this. Target player, them, draws two cards and then discards four cards. So you basically, it's like a situational blue him to Torok of them discarding two cards. What the hell? I can't even think of a situation to where I would cast this on myself. Maybe if I had like four islands in my hand or something like that, and then wishful thinking. But even that's rare. Okay, let's sprint through the cards that I'm not playing with. A lot of these are kind of hokey and I'm not even considering throwing them in. If anything, it should be higher casting cost stuff. I only have one card that costs four, nothing above that. I'm just playing this like, I'm playing like a four pool or six pool equivalent build, I think, with just a little bit more control with some of these counter spells, like, I don't know. This deck is just really, really fast and, uh, and hard to deal with. Okay, let's get started. There's my one Gossamer Phantom. Here's a kind of weird spell. This reminds me of Snake Form from the blue and green deck from last season. It's two mana, target creature loses all abilities, and is an 0-1 until end of turn. So you can do it when they're attacking. It looks like a polymorph. I just realized it used to be a warrior there and there's a sheep. Let's look at the card subtext just for one reason, just for one. You wish for me to cow your enemies? I can do better than that. Teferi, second level student. He made a sheep. Okay, so that's alright. Uh, here's a blind phantasm. I think this should be called bland phantasm. Phantasm. Ugh. I'll edit that out. It's three mana for a 2-3 illusion. So if you're just playing somehow a rushier build than I'm playing and want to do turn two lord, turn three this, it would be a a three four. I don't even know, man. It, it isn't pokeable, so if you're some weird anti-poke person, or you're rematching someone and you want to tweak your deck so they can't uh, target your dudes to die, I don't even know. I don't like these stabs in any deck. You gain one life every time an island or blue spell comes into play. I don't think it's for me. I'm not playing Claustrophobia, but every time that I play someone that is playing with Claustrophobia, I hate them, and I want to play with them. Like the card, not them. I hate them and I want to play with them. Ah. Uh, claustrophobia is weird, dude. You tap target creature and then it never untaps. It's a, just a weird version. It's like one of the few forms of creature control. So maybe I need to throw it back in. I don't even know what I would take out. I already do. It would probably be that illusory angel. I don't know. Let's keep rolling. Dream Fracture. Three mana, counter target spell, both of y'all draw a card. It's weird. Divination, uh, three mana, target player draw, no, you draw two cards. That's it. No reason why you would want them to do it. It's kind of weird for a turn three play. You only have one of these Chronozoas. It's one of some, it's one of some, one of those weird like little single, not even single cell. It just looks like science class. Every three turns, uh, every turn you remove a vanishing counter from it. So after three turns, then when it dies at any time, it comes into play with two clones of it. I kind of hated it and I don't play with it, but I had someone who actually got a use from it and it was annoying. It's also an illusion. 
So take that into account with Lords, and you can do your whole turn two Lord, turn three blank, turn four Chronozoa. That's okay. Another illusion that I'm not playing with, four mana for a 1-1, one, one, and then whenever this thing blocks, you, you may, you have the option to return it to your hand and then put another creature from your hand blocking it. It's weird to me. I don't know what, when that would be ideal or what's going on with that. If you want more phantoms, you can play with the Phantom Beast. It's four mana for a 4-5, and uh, it's pretty solid. I don't know. It reminds me a lot of the dragon. So if you just want your four spot to be filled more, then that's it. Did I talk about the dragon? Four mana for a 5-5 five five and it's glass. Uh, you play that on turn turn two lord, turn three anything, turn four this, and it's a 6-6 six, six hex proof. Come on now. Um, Disorient gives a creature minus seven minus so oh, that's terrible, dude. You can play with the Leyline Phantom. It's an illusion, five mana for a 5-5. Five five. And then when it deals combat damage, return it to its owner's hand. So you just want to keep this thing out of combat. You just want it to either hit your opponent or do nothing. I guess I'm slowly realizing what this card even is. And I think that even when it deals combat damage, it's still going to deal damage, right? And then you return it to your hand. I don't know what to think. I don't know. Maybe I'll play with it after that. If that's the way it works. Someone post in the comments if anyone made it this far. You can play with two Draining Whelks. I was playing with them before, but then I realized it was me... It was my highest casting cost spell by far. And I had these extra islands in my deck, just hoping that uh, my opponent's turn six, I would cancel their spell and get a 6-6 six, six flyer. I don't know. I phased them out because I'm playing this crazy rush build, but I might need to throw them back in because right now I don't have any oomph. Like, if I don't deal, if I don't deal 20 damage or kill them, like, in the first first wave, then I'm dead. You can play with the Royal Elemental that will also help with that. It's kind of cool, man. I need to find a way to squeeze in these bigger cards. Six mana for a 3-2. Flying. Landfall. Every time you play a land, you gain control of target creature. Oh my god, now I'm like embarrassed that I'm not playing with that, because that seems pretty solid. It's a 3-2, though. It's not an illusion, so you got to keep it alive. I was looking at this Jace's Mindseeker earlier. Six mana for a 4-4 four, four flying. It's a fish illusion. Illusion. Contusion. Uh, when Jace's Mindseeker enters the battlefield, you mill your opponent for five. And then if one of those cards was an instant or sorcery, you can pick one of them and then play it without ca casting. You can cast it without paying its mana cost. So, there's a lot of straight creature decks, man, but you're just kind of banking that you're going to mill them for five and hit something crazy. I gotta throw it in. I need to do more of a control style of this deck and see how that works. Um, if you make it to turn ten, you're crazy and you can drop Omniscience. Omniscience. Eesh. Don't worry, I'll let it out when I said Omniscience. Come on, man, I don't talk about magic out loud, I'm just reading these cards. Ten mana. You may cast non-land cards from your hand without paying their mana costs. So it's another thing where you're just pretty much dumping everything else that you had in your hand. It's really weird. Um, maybe that's why people play, are playing with that draw card mechanic. I still don't know which deck is going to be the combo deck, but I don't think it's this one. If you want to win and play like a Zergling 4-pool or 6-pool rush build, try to clone something like this. And it's fun, but just know that if they survive your first assault, you're going to be in trouble. Ah, my voice cracked at the end. Shithole. Check out phonecats.com. I'll show you more cool games, and I got deals on uh, phones and tablets and cases and stuff. And that's it. Thanks for watching, phonecats.